The Plymouth Colony Saga, told by the women who lived it, by the Central Texas Mayflower Colony of the Texas Society of Mayflower Descendants. Videos in the series of the Plymouth Colony Saga include Wives of Colony Leaders, Alice Carpenter Southworth Bradford, the wife of Edward Southworth and Governor William Bradford. Susanna Jackson White Winslow, wife of William White and Edward Winslow. It would be two parts. Wives of prominent couples, Elizabeth Tilly Howland, the wife of John Howland, and Priscilla Mullen Alden, the wife of John Alden. Introducing Susanna Jackson White Winslow, part one. Presented by Ann Bell. Presented of Pilgrim John Howland. Good day. I'm Susanna Jackson White Winslow. I know that sounds like a lot, but each name represents a very different phase of my life. Please let me explain. I was born Susanna Jackson in 1592 at Scobie, England. My parents were strict Puritan separatists. And in 1608, my father took us to Amsterdam, Holland with William Bradford so we could practice our religion without interference from the Church of England. Soon after we arrived in Amsterdam, I met William White. William's parents had died when he was young and he was raised by his grandmother. When he was 21, he moved to Amsterdam where he joined the same Puritan congregation as my family. We were quickly attracted to each other and were soon married. In 1615, we had our first son and named him Resolve because we were determined and resolved as a family to start a new life ourselves. When William Bradford and the others began planning to migrate to America, we were determined to join them as a family and worked hard to convince them that women were stronger than they thought and would be able to withstand the rigors of a transatlantic voyage and the construction of a colony. The unforeseen delays in leaving England were very concerning for the 18 women who were planning to go especially the three of us who were pregnant. Would we reach America before our babies were born? I was seven months pregnant when we finally left England. Even if I wanted to stay behind, there was no place for us to go and we were already committed to the voyage. William and I had a strong faith in God and had two servants to help us. So we ventured forth. It was a rough voyage and we spent most of our time lying or sitting on the smelly cramped floor below deck and rarely ventured up the sh shaky steps to get fresh air. The seas were generally too rough and it was dangerous to move around the ship at, in those times. Elizabeth Hopkins had her baby while we were in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and named him Oceanus. Families erected small wooden dividers and hung curtains for a semblance of privacy. And several experienced women assisted with the delivery, but it was very difficult for her. As the weather worsened, Captain Jones and the pilgrim leaders decided we should anchor in Cape Cod and make settlement there. Before disembarking, 41 men, but no women, signed the Mayflower Compact on November 24th, 1620. This was the first governing document of Plymouth Colony. A few days after signing the compact, William and I had our second son. We named him Peregrine, which is French and Middle English for the word pilgrim. My maternal travail was much easier than Elizabeth's. The men were able to explore the land to bring back fresh fish and fowl when the weather, 
allowed. We now had clean water to drink, bathing and washing clothes. None of us were prepared for a winter so much colder than England. And occasionally the snowstorms made the countryside impassable without snowshoes. The work on the houses and shelters went very slowly because of the weather, but the men persisted whenever they could. During the entire winter, we were forced to live on board the Mayflower where we suffered an outbreak of contagious diseases. Both our servants died early that winter and my beloved William died February 21st. I was devastated. My faith in God and my newborn baby and five-year-old son helped me find the inner strength to carry on. There was no time to grieve with all the work caring for the sick and dying. To make it even harder, my friend Elizabeth Winslow died March 24th. Her death was extremely sad, but fortunately she was the last one to die that horrible winter. My, her husband, Edward was heartbroken and scarcely knew what to do with himself. They did not have any children to share his grief, so he sat alone and mourned in silence. Susanna Jackson White Winslow, reenactor Ann Bell. Technical production Ann Bell. Background music. Betty Prince.